to Hawaii. Hawaii <laughs> is the birth home for Sakai. Dolphins are a big part of this journey. I say 50 dolphins all playing together in like a bubble making sound and just coming out and jumping. It was so beautiful and magical. 33 weeks and counting. <laughs> The baby was moving, I could feel it. Happy, happiness, enjoy. <laughs> different experience than at the medical center. Do I really want to take tests? And do I want to go to the doctor? His feet are here, pointed kind of this way, and his back, his back so is great. here. So his head is here. You see him right here? Yeah. There's his head. Soul Elijah. My biggest fear was ending up in the hospital to have our baby. Being pregnant, are you really willing to go that deep journey of listening to your intuition? In like bliss heaven. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're just having a contraction actually, so. Like waves of energy coming like, boo, your baby's coming, your baby's coming. <laughs> like that. Contractions are 10 minutes apart. It's like 6.40. I'm having contractions pretty close. You know, we're going to be helping Sakai and helping Sweetie out. Ooh. Doing a good job, babe. I'm doing so beautiful. The next contraction. That's good. Come on, baby. possible reason why everything was happening the way it was and it was about healing it was about bringing people together creating a peaceful birth in an in a in a place that you know we didn't think of peaceful births it definitely needs a lot of determination and courage and strength to grow a healthy little baby and to bring it into this world but it's the most beautiful deepest exciting <laughs> experience you can have. Imagine Our World Happy is the journey of five women who have followed their heart's desire to be with wild spinner dolphins during their pregnancy. And all of these women had the intention of a natural birth. I feel blessed that I was able to be a witness to this process because in 2011 I too had dreams of being with the wild spinner dolphins when I was about four months pregnant and I didn't know how to explain these especially to friends or family and I started to do a little research and at 32 weeks pregnant I brought my son, who had just turned three, to the big island of Hawaii without knowing one person to follow my calling. And I had the most incredible, beautiful birth and empowerment. And I spent two months swimming with the dolphins. I went into labor with the dolphins. And this really, um, provided me with the biggest experience that it's okay to trust that the more we trust in ourselves the more we trust in our intuition 
the more we get out of our heads, the more beauty and peace and joy we experience in our everyday life. My last blog post before I left Hawaii was that I wanted to create a center where every woman who desired to follow their dreams to be with the dolphins could come and they would be loved, they would be supported, they would be nurtured to continue to trust that path. Most of our population is living in a stressful go, go, go rat race life. I live there, <laughs> I've experienced it, but it doesn't have to be. And when we're in that go, go, go stressful life, we are creating a stressful environment for the growth and the nurture of our unborn child. And it is already proven that stress itself um, is the number one cause for disease. And we have an epidemic of childhood diseases. It's not a coincidence. You know, we are living in this life that is not serving a lot of us. And we are birthing children into a world of distrust and separation. And we're trying our hardest <laughs> to provide the best environment for our children. But that environment is not really shaped by our intuition. It's not shaped by what we truly feel and desire inside. It's shaped by society. It's shaped by how we now have been told how things should be and how they're supposed to be and how to conform to a system that really isn't serving us. A system that is continuing to nurture disease and um, unhappiness. And that's complete opposite of our birthright. It's a complete opposite of joy. It's a complete opposite of love. It's a complete opposite of excitement. And the more that we can bring joy into our everyday lives, and the more that we can lower our stress, and the more that we can learn to trust in our innate self, knowing it all inside that life can be full of more peace. It can be full of more joy. It can be full of more time to do the things that you love, or maybe even just time to remember what is it that you love. And to have more people around who really put your happiness and your being first and allow for that creation to unfold, the more we're going to bear children into an environment that's going to support them to trust, for them to feel loved, for them to encounter an experience of safety and security and that everything is okay and everything is perfect. And that's really what's important. I believe that's the root for our happiness and for our future is to step back from what we think we're supposed to be doing and following almost mindlessly, not because we're not smart and not because we don't know, but because life has become so fast and we're constantly catching up that we don't even give ourselves the time or the opportunity to step back and breathe and to reassess. A lot of times an opportunity to sit back and reassess happens when um, there's a death in the family or when you become pregnant or when you have a new death experience, or when you become so sick, you can't do your daily activities. And that's what happened to me. I, um, you know, I had this amazing, beautiful experience in Hawaii birthing my daughter and experiencing what it felt like to let go and to just live in bliss. And for some reason, I thought it was only that moment. 
and I went back to my regular life and continued to try to be the person who I was supposed to be <laughs> and um, had my own business and was doing my yoga and I was meditating and I was breastfeeding, trying to nurture a relationship with my partner, homeschooling, you know, the list can continue, paying a mortgage, paying car payments. And I just kept pushing through it, thinking, okay, if I just get through this part, I'm going to have a break. If I just get through this part, I'm going to have a break. And yeah, my break happened <laughs> in the hospital and um, completely separated from my 17 month old and by then my four and a half year old. And I was on my deathbed, you know, the um, chaplain was visiting me and my whole body had um, become numb and I was paralyzed, including my vocal cords. So I was not even able to speak. And that really gave me a different perspective of what it was to fully let go and to receive and to listen a lot more something that it's almost impossible <laughs> to listen when your mind is running a thousand miles per hour and your to-do list never ends. How? How are you supposed to take the time to listen? And so to me being in the hospital, as much as um, it was a very challenging time in my life, was the greatest gift to really step back, observe, and listen. And that listening for me was to my higher self, to God, to spirit. And it became so clear after three weeks <laughs> um, of being completely immobilized and unable to communicate that I was not living my dream. I was not living my potential. And I already knew what that was. I had written it a year and a half ago um, of creating a place, a sanctuary where other women could go to feel what I felt, to experience what I felt, that love, that trust, that surrender, and to feel the most alive that I had ever felt in my life. And, you know, with the beautiful support of my family, I was able to um, make a move to Hawaii. And although it was the most challenging choice, probably I had to make as I separated from my partner and um, brought my two kids to Hawaii. Now I have the chance to witness uh, women, <laughs> beautiful, strong, courageous women leaping into their dreams, trusting in their intuition. And it goes much more beyond being with the dolphins. I believe the dolphins play their role. They are these beautiful beings who completely exhibit love, unconditional love, joy, playfulness, excitement, uh, unity, and and when women, pregnant women especially, have their first encounter with these dolphins, it's like the whole world stands still. It's like maybe the first time that they can remember where they were just in that moment. And that moment was so full of love and so full of peace and joy. And it was like, it's like a reminder of, wow, I can experience this every single day. And that is the truth. <laughs> and we don't need the dolphins to do that every single day. But being an experiential learner that I am, for me, it's an opportunity to not just know in your head or in your heart that that experience can be, but to actually live it. And, 
you know, after swimming with the dolphins probably for a year, um, before I started um, fully diving into uh, supporting women, pregnant women, to be with the dolphins, um, I had to completely, you know, like heal and trust in myself that this isn't crazy, <laughs> you know, like a lot of people might find the work that I'm sharing is crazy. Um, a lot of people find fear in it. And um, it took a lot of courage for me to move past that fear and to really put myself on the line that I am a liaison. That's all I am. I am a liaison for you to fulfill your dream. <laughs> and, and that every woman's dream is so different. And another really cool part about this documentary is that each woman's journey is so incredibly different, even though there's so many common themes in her intertwined throughout the documentary, it's that each journey is so special. Um, you know, the first woman that I had the beautiful privilege to film and um, be with, her name is Tasha, and her family's from Argentina. And this was her second baby. So she had already had a birth in the hospital previously. And she felt disempowered through her experience and knew that it could be a different way. And when she was pregnant with her second, she followed her intuition. And her baby was sitting breech. And uh, she couldn't find a doctor, and she was staying in Utah, who would deliver her baby the way she wanted her baby to be delivered. And to her, that was a natural vaginal birth when the baby was ready to come instead of being induced or instead of having a C-section. And so she contacted me after seeing the documentary that I had created on my journey to Hawaii and the birth of my baby called Naya Journey Into Life. And she just related to that documentary and was like, you know, that's where I want to be. That's what I want to do. And so I just said, yes. I said, yeah, come. <laughs> you know? Tasha was a really big test to my to my purpose um, of am I truly here to support women in their birth choices or am I here to support women in what um, I would do? So um, Tasha really broke open a lot of doors for me <laughs> and allowed me to... Uh, really dive into a world of trust. Um, a, because her baby was sitting breech, but B, she wanted to have an unassisted breech birth and she wanted me to attend and to film her um, experience. And I received a lot of controversial messages from some of the midwives on the island and that I wasn't being uh, responsible um, for, um, for midwifery, for the safety of women on the island. So it was definitely um, a, an opportunity for me to really dig deep and be, am I really here to trust um, in each woman and her sole purpose? And am I going to support her or am I going to allow fear of others to dictate the decisions and dictate the amount of support that I'm going to give to this woman who is um, very in her knowing and trust of the way that she wants to deliver her baby. So that journey was a really powerful journey for me and uh and wow like after that experience I felt very clear that yes my role is to support other women in their birth choices and to be the best support that I can for them 
to fulfill their heart's desire. And for me to leave any other belief systems out of the way. And so that was really a, a magical time for me. Beautiful Mama Jinju. Um, you know, we had this amazing conversation <laughs> over the phone, I think a couple months before she arrived. And it was just this instant uh, beautiful sisterhood. A very educated woman and also very in her heart and balancing both of those worlds. Um, she owns her own company with her partner called Soul Flow. She's a beautiful dancer and just heart opening being. And for her and her husband it was it was a yes, you know, it was just it was just um, finding the way how to make it all happen. And, um, you know, they had been seeing a doctor there from Colorado. Just, it didn't feel right, but they didn't know uh, how else it could be because that was their only experience, but they knew that there could be something different. So, yeah, when they arrived to the island, it was, it was magic, you know, their first encounters with the dolphins of just pure bliss and pure joy and such a feeling, a release of just seeing her let go. And, and I just remember her being in the water and being like, wow, like this is a prenatal checkup. <laughs> Um, you know, so we used to joke that when we were going for our swims that, uh, that she was receiving her prenatal checkups from the dolphins. And, um, and then her having the experience of having a midwife instead of being in the hospital or in the doctor's settings. And, um, it was just a completely different experience for her that I don't think she could have imagined and um, I mean imagine having your prenatal checkups on the beach next to the ocean after you just swam with the dolphins like it's not quite the normal <laughs> um, prenatal checkup and for Jinju um, you know her biggest fear was actually having a hospital birth and so the ride that she went on you know after five days of labor and ending up in the hospital was such this incredible, powerful journey of surrendering, of letting go. And not only that, but finding the beauty and the peace and the unity of what she had expected and what she wanted and where she ended up and how her baby was born and um, just the love that is just shared in this experience is again for me <laughs> you know like I just feel so blessed that I get to witness so many transformations so much letting go so much trust that um, you know it just it fills my heart and continues to give me more power and strength and courage to live my life. And so that was another incredible journey. Wow. And Maria, <laughs> who, wow, I was so blessed to be in contact with her in her early pregnancy. She first came to Hawaii when she was just turned, I think, four months pregnant. We had a Skype session before she arrived and it, another instant connection. And it's a theme that kind of rolls through this film is that we're all connected. You know, we all have this um, underlying oneness. And, and when we see that and feel that in another person, it's, such a magical unity. It's, she wanted to come check it out and really make sure that this was her 
journey that that's really what she wanted is to be in Hawaii and to be with the dolphins. It was, it was very clear, it was very obvious to her that this, this was it. And so she went back to the mainland for a few months and um, eventually her and her husband came back to Hawaii. She had the opportunity to spend about four months uh, with the dolphins and you know, really settling into the more natural rhythm of life and feeling more than doing and giving herself time to relax and to let go and to journey and to question and um, you know, through these experiences, more doors were opening for opportunities of healing. We met another couple who also was pregnant, Darina and Micah, who, who provide beautiful sound healings and um, drum circles. And, and so that became part of our life. And then um, I met my partner, David, who also is a sound healer and an artist and incorporating more fun and joy um, through healing arts and sound and body painting and like experiential painting and creating uh, your life, creating your birth through art. It was really about bringing more fun, more joy, more lightheartedness to our lives. And so with Maria, we gathered in a circle and supported her through a sound and art journey where she created her own painting of conception and her visions of birth and holding her baby for the first time. Everything was is so in the moment. We end up gathering, because that's what we would do every day, is to go to the beach and go swim with the dolphins. And from there, the unknown would always present itself with the most beautiful opportunity of the day to create the most joy and excitement and healing for the mom. Allowing experiences to come to you at the time that they're supposed to come to you so you can fully be in that moment with the experience, if that makes sense and to receive out of that experience without expectations. You know, I feel that we've been taught to give, 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 but how often do we surrender and allow ourselves to receive? Maria went into labor, a beautiful just gathering, coming together, and my daughter was there and rearranging the altar and, um, putting flowers into the birth pool with her and seeing her and her partner connect in those days was really magical. Having this water birth and, um, you know, her, her birth ends a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah, it was magic, of course. And again, just another opportunity to let go and and not hold on so tightly to what we think we want or what we think we need, but to uh, surrender to what is and to allow that what is to be the perfect um, thing in that moment. Yeah. Mike and Darina <laughs> have had now this incredible opportunity. Um, it's their first baby and she, they, they weren't expecting to have a child. And Darina knew, really nothing about childbirth, even though she had been on this spiritual journey for years. Just a few months after they got married, they found out, well, they didn't find out because they actually chose not to take a pregnancy test and to trust um, in her own body and what she was feeling and to trust in that, in that pregnancy. And, and her journey really allows me to step back again and to witness how much she sits in her trust through her entire pregnancy. 
and how connected she was to her unborn baby. And um, when I say this, it's because she, um, she did not do any tests during her pregnancy. She, um, no ultrasounds, you know, she did have a midwife and, um, and she knew that she wanted her birth to be really private and very sacred. And at the same time, um, not having any prior knowledge to birth, she had a lot of fear. She's really consciously moving through fears and she really takes the time and space for herself to do that. Now she dove in full throttle and, um, and was really trying to clean her womb and her memories and, and to go into those dark places inside of her and where those fears were stemming from uh, and releasing them. And, um, and her and her partner uh, worked on that, you know, for basically the whole <laughs> pregnancy through many different things as we all have things that are inside of us. I feel that we're just not always willing to open those doors and to see um, the fears and to acknowledge them and to release them. So such this beautiful shining example of a woman who really um, dedicated her life in that moment to creating the best environment she could for her unborn child and uh, and also having the ability to witness now three births um, or at least three of the pregnancies and hearing of the birth stories on her journey and seeing each individual woman and their process and how they birth. And it really brought, I think, a lot of comfort. And an opportunity came where a film company um, from England wanted to come and film what we were doing. With Darina, it was really that this time was so sacred and that at the moment she didn't feel that she wanted to um, share this experience with such an audience, not because she didn't want to share it, but um, of course the fear of how it would be portrayed. Again, this is a very much <laughs> different experience than what most women have, you know? Not every woman is swimming with the wild dolphins every day and spending their days doing sound healings and drum circles and birth art and, you know, diving into their deepest fears and then exposing herself um, to the public is, is definitely, um, you know, it takes a big leap of faith of that you're going to be portrayed in the true light of who you are, especially in the media. But something came through and Darina, um, slowly felt like the baby was like, yeah, like, I want to share. I want to share that birth can be a different way. I want to share that pregnancy can be a different way. And we were blessed to have this wonderful woman from LA come and she has been on this path of trying to conceive naturally. And so she was so interested in what we were doing and what we had to say and what we were sharing that it became this, again, another sister. Shortly after Jorina's birth, it was literally like two weeks, the documentary came out in England and wow, did it shock the world. The headlines came out the day before the release of the documentary and it was all about fear and how crazy and stupid that this couple could be to want to birth their baby with dolphins. So it really had them step back and like, you know, move through this huge process of feeling I really was trying to share that there's a different way and look at the way that we're being portrayed. And again, it was just another reflection of where the majority of the world is.